guys, Sleepy Marty here, back with another video, and today we're here with moving your data from your old SSD or hard drive to a brand new drive, more specifically a Seagate drive. Now today we have a 4 terabyte drive here from Seagate, and my old original little Kingston SSD that I've had for quite a number of years now, and we're going to go ahead and migrate the data from that onto the hard drive. Now, if you're thinking, hang on a second, why on earth would you go from SSD to hard drive, that's not good enough, we're going to also to show you guys how to do file caching in another video with a dedicated SSD as well as hard drive instead of buying a fusion drive or whatever they're being branded as. So with that being said, today we'll be focusing on just moving your data across rather than the whole speed and those types of things. Now we do need to take a few things into consideration when using a 4 terabyte drive as our C drive, mainly being, well, will your BIOS support it? Now a lot of computers on the market today are coming out with more and more support with these large format drives, but there are still quite a few out there that don't have support. So for today's example, we'll be showing you on a motherboard that doesn't necessarily support specific 4 terabyte drives and is a little bit older in terms of that. So with that being said, what are we actually going to need to go ahead and move to a newer, bigger drive? Well, obviously we need our old SSD or hard drive that we're moving from because without it, we can't really move uh, anywhere at all. We also too need our newer drive. Now, remember again, if you're over th the two terabyte mark, you will need to go and do a few more steps. But for the most part, if you're under that two terabyte limit, you should be just fine. So for us, we've got a lovely uh, Seagate four terabyte drive. Also too, might need a USB memory stick, anything like that with this is just a 64 gig, I believe it is, from SanDisk, so nothing too special. Just grab yourself a uh, memory stick in case you do need to do stuff. So for today's example, this SSD is 99 or so percent full, so we can't actually install anything on it, and the software we need does need to be installed on Drive, so here's where a memory stick comes in as we'll install it there. Also too, we need a SATA cable to go ahead and connect up the hard drive because, well, not all computers have a bunch of spare SATA cables, so do check whether you have one lying around or one in the computer or one at all, otherwise you might need to pick yourself up one, they're relatively cheap and well pretty easy to get your hands on. And this is because we need both drives connected at the same time. And finally we need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now mine's some um, like cool one that goes ahead and changes to a flat head but any one will really do. We just need to open up the computer case or in terms of the laptop side, well we'll need to open up the laptop and well we have to go ahead and install drives whether you've got drive brackets and those kinds of things. Though there are a few computers with completely toolless drive cages as well as side panels so we may not need a screwdriver at all and well with that being said, also too, we do need to keep in mind if you're using a Hitachi drive or even a Western Digital drive, do keep in mind that the Seagate set of tools that we're using today won't necessarily work on your drive. Even though they're all based on the Acronos drive cloning software, there are specific ones for specific drives. So if you have a WD drive, get one from WD or Hitachi and so on and so forth. So today we're using a Seagate drive, so we'll use the Seagate set of tools. Let's go ahead and get started into that. First thing we'll need to do is go ahead and, well, open up the computer case again using your screwdriver or if it's just thumb screws go ahead and remove it by hand and go and connect up the SATA cable to the SATA header on the motherboard and give the drive some power and SATA connections. Once that's done we're going to go ahead and boot up the computer making sure it still turns on and boot into our old hard drive. Once we're in there we're going to go ahead to the software side and continue on with this whole procedure. So before we get started we do need to format our brand new hard drive now because of a lot of motherboards these days are coming out without as much support for 4 terabyte drives we do need to go ahead and well basically make the drive look as one. Now whether it be Windows or your motherboard, there are lots of things out there today that just won't pick up 4 or even 3 terabytes. So we'll jump up to the computer tab in the computer window, go down to manage. Once we're in manage, we'll go down to disk management and let that load up. Once that's load up, we can see our brand new hard drive. But the problem is it's sort of in two different partitions and we don't really want that. So what we're going to do is go ahead and left click on this little tab here and go convert the disk. Now at the moment the disk is kind of in its factory state and now it's into the way we want it so Windows and the motherboard can pick it up as one large drive. Now if it's formatted to the other, the MBR disk format, uh, it will pick up as two separate drives so we do want to keep that in mind when formatting our hard drives. Once we've done that we can close it off and install the disk wizard. Once the disk wizard is installed, we see we have a ton of different things, but we'll be focusing mainly on that uh, cloning feature at the moment as we'll come to the next bit in a second. So the install is pretty simple. Just follow the simple steps there. And we're going to go ahead and hit clone disk. Now we're going to use the automatic one because, well, it's automatic. And we're going to select disk one is our primary drive, which is the source. So that's the hard drive or SSD you're using currently is showing us what we've got here. We're going to hit next there. And it's going to give us a bit more loading time. We're going to hit disk two, which is our four terabyte drive. Now it does give us a little 
little bit of a warning down there, but we should be just fine here. So make sure that is all well and selected and it doesn't really like four terabyte drives, but there's not much we can do. We go ahead and click next and just okay to that warning message as we'll fix this later on. And it'll show us the two drives and what they're going to end up looking like. We're going to hit proceed and basically let it go ahead and go through its stages. Now it'll go ahead and do this calculation thing oh, and then go ahead and tell us to restart. But basically depending on how large your drive is, will really depend on how long this procedure will take. It took me about 15 minutes for a 50 or so gigabyte drive. So again, depending on how large it is will depend on how long it takes. Now once that's gone ahead and we're on our new hard drive, we're going to reinstall the Seagate um, Magician software again so we can go ahead and use our full 4 terabyte drive because at the moment Windows is only picking it up as 2 terabytes. So we've gone ahead and cloned the drive already so it's all well and good. So we'll just go ahead and let that go and install and all those good things. The procedure is fairly simple to go ahead and do. It loads up fairly fast and all those good things. Once it's installed, we're going to open up the program. It does take a few seconds to go ahead and load up. It gives us this little upgrade to the full version. But now we're going to focus on the actual disk management tab of this program. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click that and it's going to initialize and it's telling us that we need a driver to go ahead and use this. Once the page loads up, we're going to go ahead and click the download link in the number one in the solution button. We'll just go ahead and let that download and with the magic of editing, it has downloaded. So we're going to go ahead and click that exe once and we'll go ahead and well load up the program to install. It's a fairly quick installer, doesn't take much time, and once that's done, we can go ahead and create our new disk. We'll just follow the steps that it says on screen, follow the prompts, it'll go ahead and extend our drive. It'll take a few seconds to go ahead and do, but overall it's fairly fast, and bam, our drive is now extended. So what it's done is it's not going to actually show up in this window here, and don't freak out if it's not showing up. We're going to go up to computer and go back to manage, and what we're going to do is format the drive. Now, for this example, we're going to show you what not to do, so don't format it as the GPT disk, because that's not going to be picked up at all. So once that's gone ahead and formatted in the correct format, so as you can see on the screen, it's the wrong one. We'll show you what happens here. We can go ahead and simple format it, all those kind of things, which is what you need to do, but it's never going to show up. So we just called it data for this example and all those good things. Bam, we've hit finished and it's not there. So if you've gone ahead and accidentally done this, what you can do is follow these quick and simple steps to go ahead and reverse that. Just make sure if you put any data there, you don't go ahead and lose it. So what we're going to do is go back up to computer and go into the management tab. Once we're in the management tab, we're going to go ahead and delete the volume that we created. Once we deleted it, we can go over the disk and convert to the well correct format that we actually need. Once it's gone ahead and formatted, we can format the drive into well a simple format and go ahead and just follow the on screen prompts and name it anything that you would particularly like and you're pretty much good to go. Finish up the formatting, go ahead back to that computer tab, refresh the page and your new drive is now available to be used and put storage on. Now you may know notice we lost a little bit of storage on this drive but seeing that we got a four terabyte drive it isn't that much of an issue now you could possibly extend these drives and all those kind of things but for the sake of this it's a pretty simple process and basically at this stage we're gone ahead and clone to a new drive and we're all well and good there and that's about it it's a fairly simple process just make sure you have everything and plenty of time depending on the size of that SSD or hard drive you're moving from it will vary in terms of how long it will take now if you are doing this on a laptop do keep in mind that there's not usually two drive spaces so you're probably also too going to need some sort of docking station or some sort of USB dock to go ahead and connect up the extra hard drive. So with that being said, it's a fairly straightforward procedure and most people will be able to do it. And again, if you're over two terabytes, you will need to do a few more steps and maybe even have a piece of software installed to actually manage the uh, large format drive. But again, as hardware and software improves down the line, I'm sure this won't be a problem in the future. And in the end, we'll probably have like memory sticks this size with like eight terabytes on it and those kinds of things. So with that, guys, being said, like what it's like, the video accordingly let me know if you had any problems along these stages let me know if you have any questions in general about this topic and uh give us a sub if you like what we're doing and i'll see you guys next time for another video